Atsushi Fujita lost almost everything ten years ago. The tsunami swept his fishing boat three kilometers inland. He survived, but his brother and colleagues were killed. There were dead bodies in the water. I even remember seeing the floating body of a man wearing a kitchen apron. The town of Rikuzen Takata was among the places hit hardest by the tsunami. 10% of the population died, and 90% of its fishing fleet was destroyed. Today, local fishermen are protected by an eight meter high seawall. At first, the wall felt oppressive. I was stressed out all the time. It was like being in a kind of prison, day in, day out. But now I don't think it's possible to destroy the wall. It's better to learn to live with it. Fujita has reason to feel optimistic. His oyster cultivation business is booming, a sign that the ocean can give as well as take away. The tsunami cleaned the soil on the seabed, so now it only takes two years for oysters to reach their best. Before the disaster, it took three years. They grow really quickly. It's said that the tsunami was a once in a 1,000 year event, but it feels like the sea has become 1,000 years younger. The sea can be generous. Fujita is living proof of the resilience of the people of Tohoku. It makes me feel hungry. They're bigger than my tummy. In Fukushima, people who had to flee their homes after the nuclear disaster have returned to open a traditional restaurant. Ten years on, it's a symbol of recovery, attracting diners of all ages. People in other countries don't really understand what's happening in Fukushima. I spent some time living abroad and people would ask me if anyone was living here. I want to tell people that life here isn't what they think. Look around, we're alive and happy. This is what Fukushima is like today. It's unlikely that life in Fukushima will ever return to normal. But a decade on, people here are slowly rebuilding, helped by an unshakable community spirit.